play out on its like it's one big play park for them, but they're in like the hustle and bustle of the towns or anything like that. It's brilliant for the kids. You're pretty isolated out here, aren't you? Do you mind that? No, no, no. I like sooner live here than in a big town, absolutely. Another former fisherman, the current coxswain at the station, is Dave Steenvorden. He's the first to be contacted if ever there's an emergency. I've got a phone call from the Coast Guard um, requesting a lifeboat to launch, go through on the phone. I uh, would then uh, set the pages off and we have a nice big siren and bell in each of the houses. And how long does it take the crew to get rallied and down to the boat? If we've got a boat broken down, it's in no immediate danger. It's still an emergency. I fire the siren off once. The lads know, don't break the necks, and we'll probably walk down the jetty rather than run. If it's life at risk, or even the chance of it changing to a life at risk, I call it a double beller, where I fire it off twice and we're off like rockets. Today I'm joining the crew for their training exercise. Without me holding them back, they'll be able to man the lifeboat within 10 minutes of the siren sounding. On occasion, they've made it in half that time. Dave, what's it like living and working on the station? It's, uh, it can be quite difficult at times, because um, you have to live, breathe and sleep, spend point in the lifeboat. Most of it actually quite enjoy it. It's, it's a nice way of life. We've got a full-time crew because at Sperm Point we are so remote. It is probably the best place in the whole area to operate a lifeboat from. And do you still get an adrenaline rush when you're getting out? Absolutely. I'm 20 odd years in there on the line now, and uh, as soon as you get that call, it's the adrenaline kicks in, and it's everything we train and, and live for, really. So, yeah, when the call comes in, we're, we're, we're quite masochistic. We quite like it. So. <laughs> Because in the I Wanna Lie, we have a great tradition of volunteers. So today we're going to man overboard exercise. Great tradition. We draw straws for it. Short one with the man overboard. Oh, right. <laughs> Unlucky. That's very short. <laughs> there may be another. 50 <laughs> 50, Adam. Oh, oh <laughs> I've been stitched up. Yeah. This is the one exercise the team practice more than anything else. Push me up. Today it's Brian and my turn. If they lose a crew member overboard, it's vital they get him back as quickly as possible. Luckily for me, in May, the water's not too cold and the crew have got me trussed up in a wool-lined suit underneath a dry suit. So I'm toasty warm, but it's easy to imagine what it must be like to be stranded at sea under difficult conditions. And I'm extremely relieved when they rescue me. Oh, what an incredible experience. Really, you feel totally isolated when you're out there, but when the boat car starts arriving, you know safety's on its way. Oh, I wouldn't want it to happen for real. How do you feel about the service you provide then, Dave? Passionately. What me and the lads like to do, and then all the other lifeboat men, is just go out and help people. Come back, job well done, fantastic feeling, you know it. Don't always go that way, unfortunately, but that's life, so. And what about the day you retire and you're watching the boat go out without you? Uh, when I retire, I shall go up the road and I certainly won't look over my shoulder. Not because I want to get away, it's just that I just don't want to watch somebody else take the boat to sea. So, Adam, did all of that make you fancy being a lifeboatman? Well, I wouldn't mind, John, but the trouble is I live in the Cotswolds and there's not much call for them there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all from Spurnhead, but just before we go, here's a reminder to send in your entries to the Countryfile Photographic.